Hello and welcome to Release Your Mind again. We were gonna continue our expat talks. We will be talking about expat moms and how they are having difficulties to find school for the kids and how difficult sometimes can be the first day of the school. So let's talk about finding a school in a new country or in a new city. It might be quite challenging. If it is a new city, it has a little bit of less obstacles because more or less because you are in the same country, you know, you know where to look, uh, what to be careful with, uh, the teachers, how you can find the better school or what is the system, etc. So it is a little bit easier. But if you are changing a country, especially if you are going to a country that you are not necessarily using the language, it might be a huge challenge. And uh, what we hear from expat stories is basically when people decide to change the country, they are looking for basically two very important things, housing and if they have kids, school. These are the two very important things that make people move, isn't it? That is why we want better education for our kids. So sometimes we sacrifice from ourselves and in order to serve to the greater good, let's say, we move on to another country. We thinking that, you know, we're going to provide our kids a better education and hopefully a better future. So when we don't know many things about the education system, it might be really challenging for us, especially if the language is different. Let's think about, we know more or less the language and then we don't know where to look. Uh, the first thing we're going to have a look is obviously we should have a look if we are allowed to send our kid to schools in different different suburbs in many countries it might change in many countries also if it is a private school you can send your child anywhere in any city that you are living in or in some countries you also have to be suburban which means that you have to be a uh, close to the school if you are not close to the school you are not allowed to send even if it is a private school and for government schools, it is in many countries, you have to be next to the school. So you just go to the school, you tell uh, what you are looking for, and then they probably put you in a list and they will call you back. You know, uh, if the nearest school doesn't have space, then they move you to the second nearest and the third nearest school. That is how it happens. In such cases, it is very important to decide the school before deciding the housing because if we are especially moving for the better education for our kids we have to keep in our mind that the school is we should be looking for the best school and then uh, if we can afford the suburb then we should go for that suburb to live in in order to our kids to be able to get into that school so that is the very important part because sometimes obviously we are kind of, you know, know the system, look at the system. Sometimes we can be misled by other people. So it is always important to get information from the forums, from other moms, from people who moved into that country before you did. But at the end, you have to make sure before you move into there that you are actually uh, emailing or phoning back and forth with the school or with the whatever whoever is looking after this system is it supposed to be the council is it supposed to be uh, the school principal who is deciding uh, to take you to, to take your child in or not that's very important so at the end before you make your decision you have to make sure actually you are talking with the authorities so not just you know uh, just recommendation just what other people told you but this is very good if you can make that such investigation you know it is very good let's let's say you are an indian and you are going to go and live in england and of course you're going to ask your fellow indians who have moved there before and then you're gonna get a lot of information. Some people say go to X suburb and then that's school. Then you can put your child into that school. But then if you don't call the school or if you don't call the authority who's gonna decide on that, you wouldn't know maybe that school has a very long wait list and there is no way for you, even though you live just nearby the school, maybe in 100 meters, 100 meters away from the school, maybe you wouldn't be able to get into that school, your kid 
wouldn't be able to get into that school because the school is full. So you're just going to be sent to another school, which is two kilometers away, which is definitely entirely not your preferred. So please do not forget to check with the authorities at the end. That is a very important thing. Uh, lesson learned hard, <laughs> I can say. That's one of the most important things. Second of all, we have to look what is good. You know, sometimes when you ask your you know, uh, friends or the people who, you know, get to know from internet, okay, that's very nice, as I said, it's very good advice, but some people might say, oh, send your kid to that school, it's a very good school. According to what? That's very important to ask detailed questions. It is not because other people's, are judgment, other people's judgments are wrong. It is because, for example, for me, a good school might be a school with good facilities, which means that maybe I am looking, looking like five-star hotel type facilities. That is important for me. For another person, it might be important the teachers, approachable teachers by me, teachers who are mm, happy to spend another five minutes with my kid because she might be also uh, struggling with the second language and I might be struggling with the second language as well. So I also might need some, you know, help. That is, That might be important to have kind, nice, approachable teachers. For another person, it might be not the teachers, not the school facilities, but the curriculum, what they are teaching, what are the lessons, and if they are delivering at the end of the semester, what, the, what they're supposed to be delivering. Some people might be basically academic results and other things. Or my kid might have some specific needs, like if she's having or he's having some swimming lessons, some piano lessons. And then maybe in some schools, it is also inside the curriculum and they have really good teachers sometimes. That is also really worth looking into and some people also might be thinking they might be both working mother and father or they might be a single parent and they might be looking at if the school is very long hours maybe they really need schools who pro provides after school care or before school care yes in some uh, countries they also provide before school care uh, i know uh, for a fact in australia we have in england we have in some of the um, european countries we have in america we have isn't it uh, in sri lanka we have in india many countries turkey i don't think so but in many countries they do. so if the school starts at uh, eight there is always a designated uh, teacher who is coming to school at seven and you can drop your kid one hour before uh, to that particular class so they can finish their homework this teacher is helping them uh, that's a really nice environment you know your child is safe and uh, your child will be there until you go and pick them up so they will be also doing the homework and getting some homework help or maybe some sports uh, they, they might be doing. That is also very important to look into, especially for the working families. If you don't have uh, the chance to stay home and get your kid as soon as the school finished, it is very important to make sure that they're actually getting good help after school and good after school care is also very, very important for some cases. So these are many, many challenges, I know, but there are many people, many forums out there who are, you know, willing to help. Uh, and then, you know, also wherever you're going to move in, they're also uh, will be helping you. And what else? Let's say you decide on the school, you put, you registered your kid, you moved in, and then the first day of the school started. Uh, another expat challenge is usually it is unfortunately i feel a little bit sad about the kids on that but there is you know life is life it happens uh, we might need to start in the middle of the year it might not be the first day of the semester so it it, it makes it a little bit hard uh, especially for the bigger kids you know everybody settled everybody already have a friend everybody have already get a little bit cozy with each other and, and then they go in and they try to make space for themselves so it might be a little bit more challenging for the kids also you know uh, we're also trying to help our teenagers our kids as well in here for the smaller kids you know they whinge and whine in the beginning much more than the bigger bigger kids but they adapt much more quicker which is great which is actually great for them 
So let's say this is the first day you drop the kids and then you slowly, slowly start to go to school, dropping off, picking up. And then there comes the question, there are other parents. What should I have to be doing? Should I have to be talking to them? Should I have to approach them? Should I have to wait for them to come to me? Uh, these are very important questions and every morning when you drop your kid, you were like, mm, I see this mom all the time. Should I have to talk to her? Mm, can I be friends with some of them? I hear my, uh, from my daughter that, you know, Sarah's mom is really nice. Should I have to be messaging her? I can easily get her telephone number. These are the questions that we have been asking it to ourselves. Okay, as we mentioned, in the beginning of expat life, it might be really challenging, it might be really difficult, especially we don't have enough uh, social network around us. What we can do is, if we are in need of a friend, then we can definitely go for it. And we should make a nice plan, uh, and we should just make a little move. I know that it sounds like having a date or, you know, trying to make somebody convinced to go out with you to have a date. I always call it, it's a date <laughs> every time. So basically, from these parents, uh, anybody who you might be feeling closer to, who might you be feeling like you have some kind of same level of energy, let's say, feel free to approach to them. It is really important. Because, don't forget, people already settled. People might be living there for the last 10, 20 years in the same suburb and just, you know, uh, they have friends, they have high school friends, they have job uh, friends. So you are the one who doesn't have friends and who are in need. If you don't ask, then you can't receive. So uh, make sure that you, you're going to ask. How are you going to do that? Basically, just approach them, ask questions, uh, and then... You can say, you know, you can, you can ask like, oh, do you live close by? And then uh, you can ask that, you know, I am also not working. Uh, is, are you guys as parents sometimes get together? If there is any get togethers, I would like to be involved, you know, and make sure that you are actually more talking and giving information about yourself. Uh, again, in many cultures, like for example, in Eastern cultures, People, if you're an outsider, people tend to come to you. People tend to ask you like, hi, how are you? Are you the new parent? I am the class representative parent. Can I help you? If you need anything, here is my number. Where are you coming from? Oh, that's great. How long are you going to be here? Oh, that's great. So, so that's, if you have such parent, just cling on to him or her. It's, they are like lifesavers. They tell you everything about school. Because sometimes you, you don't know there is a newspaper. You don't know you should be following the Instagram page of the school, etc. Whatever it is. So these parents tell, fill you in immediately about what is going on in the school. When is the registration for the school team? Uh, when is the audition for this little uh, theater play? So etc. So that's really important. If you have such a lifesaver person, we must be really thankful to them. Uh, but in, when we go from east to west, uh, it is might it might be less. In some school, there is a designated parent and there is a designated a student as well for your kid so from the same class somebody is helping your kid and from your class also a parent uh, might be signed to help to other parents so if there is such service it is great again just make sure you are asking all your questions don't be hesitant the more you ask the more you learn don't think that you are being boring yeah it might be boring but don't forget they signed up for it so there must be a reason behind it so don't be shy Try to ask all the questions you need. You can get that information in six months time or you can get that same information in 15 days time, in two weeks time. What would you prefer? In two weeks time, if you get uh, all the information about what to do, where to go, you know, what uh, the kids can do in this city, what are the fun things to do, if they are coming together, if there are any play dates, that would be great. If there is nobody, if there is no one, then it is, you know, it is time for you to stand up and to say, hi, I'm new. Uh, you know, I am such and such uh, mother or father. 
Uh, I would like to get some more information. Is there any get togethers? Is there any play dates? Uh, can I give you my telephone number? I work in such and such or I live in such and such street. That is really important. So try to keep not asking questions, but giving loads of information because asking too many questions uh, might be considered in some cultures again as private questions and you shouldn't be asking it might be even some places it might be the violation of their safety they might be thinking well, why why are you so curious on all you know there is like a hundred parents here why did you come to me so they might be taking it on the wrong direction as well like why are you asking them? i mean who are you <laughs> you'll never know it might happen time to time. Usually it doesn't, but there is a big chance also it might happen. So it is important you give information about yourself without putting yourself into danger as well. And then telling that ah, such and such is going to the same class uh, with your daughter, your son, I think. I saw them coming out of the classroom. That's why I approached you. So it is important to explain. And then you can say, you know, uh, what you would like to do after you give all this information you just wait you know they might call you they might not call you it is important not to just approach one person and wait but it is important to even if you are a little bit shy even if you are lacking on the language part it is important just you know try to approach it is your job because you just came new so you are the one who needs information basically they don't need you but you need them and believe me, there will be many, many people who you will make friends and sometimes you will make friends for life, especially if your kid can be good friends with their kids. It would be really nice to have someone to talk to, to go to, or when you are really busy and you cannot pick up your kid to have someone. It is, it is basically a lifesaver. These people, there are really nice and kind people in every culture, in every country in every school and in every classroom and we really have to appreciate them but there is only one job we have to do we have to go out there and we have to find them it is our job as expats i wish you a very happy day and please tell me when you went to a new country what happened in the school as a parent did any funny things happen to you maybe some also it might happen some sad things also might happen Please let us know on the comment section and please if you're liking our channel please do not forget to subscribe as well we are always uploading new videos every week thank you very much for listening